in this episode of Mind Pump. So the first half of this episode, we talk about the best half. current events. We talk about our lives. We bring up studies. Um, and then the second part of this episode is where we answer questions uh, that are asked by listeners like you on our Instagram page. And they're all usually fitness related. Where it says Quasel. So here's what we talk about the intro portion. This is the first 37 minutes. We start out by talking about the masks people wear on their faces around town. Like, what's the deal with that? Is it just to prevent illness? Is that or, a metaphor or is that a real thing? Or is it to hide their faces? Uh, then we talked about strange fetishes. Justin brought that one up. Hey, that was all. That's Justin's what I'm good thing. for today. We talked about what I discussed with our private forum last night. Talked about speeding up the metabolism to our private forum. By the way, we do have a private forum for people. So if you want to check that out, you can go to uh, mindpumpmedia.com. Um, we talked about how PG&E cut off the power to like 800,000 people in California because they suck. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the Thanks. new sauna here at Mind Pump. Uh, it's a clear light infrared sauna. It's awesome. It's the best sauna we've ever used. Uh, and we have a hookup for you. In fact, if you go to infraredsauna.com forward slash Mind Pump, uh, one of their representatives can call you. But make sure you mention Mind Pump. You can mm. get up to $600 off the purchase of a sauna. So massive, massive discount. It fits three large men, just yeah. so you know. Then we talked about my uh, workout yesterday and how I deadlifted uh, a lot of weight, and I'm trying to get up to 600 pounds. You guys will never see that number. Mm. We talked about genetically edited Ooh, babies ouch. in Russia. What the hell's going on over there? Uh, Justin brought up the new Copper Camp mug from Mir. Uh, that we're going to use for Moscow Mules. That's mm. the official Mind Pump drink. It's badass. But these copper mugs are uh, insulated, like a lot of the products from Mir. And Mir is one of our sponsors. If you go to Mir.com, M-I-I-R.com, and use the code Mind Pump, you'll get 25% off your entire order. I talked about a study that showed that owning a dog reduces your all-cause mortality. Dogs make you healthy. And then I talked about Team how dog. Uh, some studies showed that the prehistoric humans... We're storing food kind of like the same way we store canned foods. That's Adam a, think it's bullshit. That's interesting. Then we got the uh, fitness portion of the episode. This is where we answer questions. The first question, this person says, you know, they've heard us talking about using a sauna right after a workout, but if time is limited, when are other good times to use a sauna? So we talk all about sauna use, its benefits, and the best times to use one. The next question, this person wants to get stronger with their bench press. So we talk all about techniques and tools you can use to get your bench press numbers to go up. The next question, this person wants to know about reverse dieting. What is it and what are the uh, the benefits? What the hell is a reverse diet? Yeah, it's in reverse. And the final question, this is a personal trainer that wants to know what we think about them taking the leads and stuff they get from the gym that they work out, taking them outside the gym and training these people in their homes or other places to make more money. Adam goes off on that part of the episode. Yeah. Also, this month, MAPS Anabolic, our most popular workout program, which comes complete with workout videos and explanations, exercise blueprints. There's three phases to the program. It's all set up for you. It's a program designed to build muscle, strength, and speed up the metabolism. It's the best program we have for most people for those three things. This program is 50% off, half off. It's the only time we do the sale all year long for MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsred.com, that's M-A-P-S-R-E-D.com, and use the code RED50, R-E-D-5-0, no space for the discount. You know, uh, the other day we were talking about uh, those face masks. You guys remember that? Yeah, what is it called? It's not a face mask. It's like a. Well, I mean, what is that called, Doug? There's an. There, there's not a name for it, is it? It's just a surgical kind of mask that they wear when you know they don't uh, want to get sick or get other people sick. I guess it's not, that's what, it's not so like a handkerchief. That was your just, theory and my theory somewhat too. Like I was like, I just think it's more than that because I see like it, there's a younger generation that's doing it all the time now, and it, it actually dates back a long time. Well, and they and you now think it's for the facial recognition stuff. No. No. no, that's what they were doing. In Hong Kong. So I got oh, yeah. I got DM'd about this. This is what it said. Say, hey, just listen to an episode on Mind Pump about why people uh, like hip hop artists and other festival goers wear those face masks. 
I know people wear them because A, you can make them out of beads and look quote unquote mysterious at mm -hmm. shows kind of like a homemade costume. Yeah, and, or if you're ugly. And B, <laughs> and B, you can hide your mouth and face if you're rolling or tripping so nobody can see you chipping or chewing or grinding your teeth. Oh, wow. Yeah. What about their eyes? I know. They got to hide their eyes drugs. too. I knew there was something up with that old yeah. Asian lady at the bus stop today. She was on, she was <laughs> <Yeah>. on Molly. <laughs> she, she's it's fucking like, yeah. well, You're friendly. Yeah, <laughs> rolling, <laughs> rolling hard there, huh, lady? Yeah, yeah. yeah. why are you... Why are you <laughs> You put your head in my shoulder. Yeah. Me. Hmm. That's I why did, they also do the uh, the pacifiers. You guys ever seen pictures so of that? So actually, the rest of the, uh, the DM says that. She goes, it's, it's similar to why people do the pacifiers. Man, Although I, I think that draws more attention to you as a grown man. Yeah, I, I, hold on a second. Yeah. I, I, I think it's weirder <laughs> right. to be at a party. Hey, maybe people won't notice me grinding my teeth, but I'm chewing on a fucking pacifier. <laughs> yeah, look like a look like a moron. Well, that's, on a, that started at uh, Boys in the Hood, right? I, think uh, I don't so. think it started there, but it was there. It wasn't there. Yeah, it wasn't was that. it Boys in the Hood or was it? Yeah, boys it was. Don't huh? be a menace to society while they, sipping they apple mocked, juice. They whatever. mocked Boys in the Hood, though. Yeah, I know. So that was no. A, there was there was two. There was Boys in the Hood, and then there was Menace to Society, which was not a mocking. That was an actual right. uh, movie. And then there was the one that mocked it. That was called yeah, yeah. Don't Be a Menace While Sipping Your Juice in the Hood. That's yes. what it was. That, that was, was the one. The Wayne, was and the Wayne's brothers did that, right? Yeah. And they yeah. had the the but they were making fun of the original people that I'd never. They seen. They were making fun of all those movies. I had never seen anybody yeah. do it until Boys in the Hood. And mm. and right after Boys in the Hood came out, there was like a little spike in pacifier sales because they were. <laughs> I saw them around. I saw them with within my peers and stuff. It's all baby style if you think about it. Yeah. Pants falling down, pacifier. You know what I mean? Totally. It's like a little baby. Uh, that was well, a great movie, by the way. Boys in the Hood. Classic. I love that movie. Classic. There's a big community. Uh, well, I guess not really big, but there's people that are into that whole thing of like you know diaper changing and all that as adults. Oh my god! I'm like, what is this? That's, <laughs> that's me. What I think of when I think of somebody with a pacifier, like I'm a like, fetish. Yeah, that's a we it's real, dude. That's a real fetish. Yes. You know yeah. what always concerns me it's more? Like big fat guys too. What's more concerning get. to me is that when we talk about these weird fetishes, Sal can always confirm them. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, like I like hear him like, say it might have well, been from yeah, Sal. Yeah, how did yeah. this happen? Hold on a second. Wait a minute. How did I even Justin know about this? brings it up. Yeah, yeah. no, but you're always the one to give her. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just oh, because yeah. I remember all the weird <laughs> shit. First yeah, of all, I actually have the link right here. Just because just you forget yeah. everything you've ever read. One of these days. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't confirm it. Touche. Yeah. Uh, Touche. No, but it's I, I, I remember a long time ago reading an article because it was there was a, a it's you're right, Justin. It's like a fat dude. Yeah. And he's wearing a diaper. Every and, yeah. And there's like things that like uh, what are they called? Uh, not festivals, but uh, conventions. Yeah. Where they show up and they like to have people change their diaper and stuff. No, it's a thing. I I remember watching. You guys never watched that show Taboo. Uh, oh yeah. my god, I remember that, dude. They covered like all of these crazy fetishes. Like, wait, where ones... was where was that show Taboo on? I I don't know. I think it was like um, was it like Nat Geo or yeah, something? Nat Geo Discovery or one of those. Yeah, where it was like, you know, it had had a lot of like animal like you know stuff like that. Like I would normally watch for for entertainment, but then it got it got this weird show on there and it was like really fascinating to see what people were into. And like, if you know, they had different names for each of these things, like somebody that was like in love with inanimate objects. Yes. And there was, I saw one where there's people that are sexually, uh, aroused by cars or, or furniture yeah. or weird shit. There's this one dude that had a, yeah, he was in a sexual relationship with his car. Yes. Yeah. I saw that he, one. And he just loved it. Now, yeah. do you think there's something that obviously happens yeah. To all the, these people that have, I like, love that exhaust pipe. These yeah, off. Just wait till the car cools down. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, Sorry. dude, bad visual. Yeah. <laughs> is there something? Is there something that you think that happens to these people at, in their early years, like childhood or something, or, or maybe like they were probably has to be right. Yeah, that, that whole imprint, right? Like there's like one. There's part of the developmental process where it's like you, you're you're exposed to something. I'm sure like that's like, part of it, right? I envision like a, someone has a weird car fetish like that. Like how does that happen? It's probably like they're in their locked in their car seat from ages like two to five, and, and their parents <laughs> fuck in the car all the time. Oh my god! Right, and they get and it gets in, imprinted yeah. on that kid's head. He doesn't know. He right. just want, he just gets older and wants to fuck cars. Also, oh, it's it's weird, man. You don't think that's how it goes I down? I really don't know how that happens. It yeah, might, but you know, humans were such complex uh, animals that we we take everything that's essential to life. So think of all the essential things: food, shelter, clothing, sex. And because they're essential, we create cultures around them, and then we make them really complex and weird. So, like, look at food. Like, what, what do we need for food? We need sustenance, then that's it. But we have all this weirdness around food, and we, co we cook all kinds of foods that look weird and different and colorful and all kinds of 
Same thing with our homes and our clothes. Like all we need are clothes to protect us from the elements. But you look around, everybody in here is wearing something different to look. So it makes sense that with sex, we'll do the same thing. So yeah. and they just get weirder and weirder. But think of like the other fetishes, like uh, like the like the more common ones, like a foot fetish. That's actually a quite common one among like why why are men Ugh. why are people attracted to feet? <laughs> That's you can't procreate with feet. I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? That one just no, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah so what talk. are your questions looking like? Because you're you've been doing the the live you know, forum questions. What kind of questions are you getting inside of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. None of these. <laughs> <laughs> None of this stuff. Save the good stuff. Yeah, no, I, I would say our forum is like uh, probably more interested about the science to support whatever it is that we talk about on the show. I feel like that's Well, the forum is, seems to be, so a lot of listeners don't know, we have a private uh, Facebook forum and it's, it's a small group. It's uh, about 3,000 people and we like it that way. And it's, it's kind of a split between people who like really dark humor uh, people who like the science about fitness and health, and then um, you know people who like to talk about uh, political current events discourse. And stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we have this private forum for people to meet each other, discuss things, and what we've been doing recently is every Wednesday um, I'll pop up on there and do a live talk and then a live Q and A. So each time I try and pick a topic, and this last time I did, um, I talked about speeding up the metabolism. So I, I talked for about fifteen minutes on how you go about speeding up the metabolism, how you go about doing that with diet and exercise and all that stuff. And then I open it up for just the Q&A. And usually the questions are related to what I talked about, but sometimes they're random. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're like, hey, Sal, what's your favorite, you know, whatever. And I'll yeah. answer that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's cool. But I did this one in my house last, uh, last time. No, I saw Does that. It, did you see that? <laughs> I did see that. I did see that. You are going to talk shit? I was going to come and talk shit, but I figured I better not do that. Why? Well, I, I love that when you guys uh, do No, that. no, no. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like yeah, I don't want to I don't want to overdo it, you know, especially if you're yeah. on a roll and you're dropping it has really to be good. special. You I can't mess with me, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, we'll you guys have tried to mess up my flow. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't happen. Yeah, hey, you do. You do have like a bit of a stone wall with that. I don't yeah. know how you do it. I, hey. I I did show Did you watch the very beginning when I showed cuz when I first get on there I wait for people to come on. So yeah. I kind of so I thought, what can I what can I do for the first few minutes to wait for people to pop on. You start juggling or what? No, I can't juggle. Oh, I've tried. I uh, I showed everybody my original Arnold Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia body. <laughs> oh, the the real the original the ones one. all duct taped together. Wow. Yeah, dude. So I showed everybody that that thing's like my it's so important to me. <laughs> you open it, it's just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, did either one of you guys get affected by the power outage yet? Yeah, this guy. Hey. Oh, really? Hello. Did you see my story? I did a I did a story on because uh, someone my sister sent me a great meme, and I was like, "Oh, this is so perfect for her and I," because we both uh, know what it's like. And it said it had something along the lines of. Uh, all of you that have never never been poor and never had your your electricity out for a day or two, uh, it shows. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. they're freaking out. Yeah, because right. everybody's freaking Dude, out. Dude, this is you such need to apply that to camping. Too. So here here's a great example of why we don't want uh, because our energy is supplied by one company, PG and E. We have no competitors, Dude. and that's because it's such a regulated market that anybody trying to enter that market, it's impossible. So it's basically like a com combination of market and government. So now we're stuck with one. Oh. And could oh, you imagine? We're worried about the wind. It's not windy. Okay. <laughs> I, I, just, I just imagine in my head, like, you know, a group of the executives, like, oh, yeah, you guys want to sue us for being responsible for all this? Hey, <laughs> how you like not having power? How you like that? Yeah, huh? That's Where are you going to get it? That's, Nowhere. That's what happened because they got <laughs> sued for the, for the fires. The reality is, those fires were there because environmentalists were not allowing uh, us to go in and clear out all that old brush and stuff. So it's this buildup of all this good, dry, you know, brush. Then there was a fire, and they were terrible. So pg e gets blamed. Oh wow! So is this what's going on right now? So these are all. Pr this is all. Uh, what's the word? Um, Proactive. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. saying, and they're saying that or this preventative. Is, yes, they're mm -hmm. saying this is the new norm. Oh, so now what they're no, saying what? is like, this is a total like fuck you for coming it after. Is. Like, wow, it is. I don't. I did not smells, know that. It completely smells. I about. don't think it's a necessary. Bro, a it's fuck. it's supposed well, to be. Is it? It's supposed to be this crazy win. It hasn't been. I have. I'm super sensitive to wind because of my allergies. Mm, yeah. It hurts so, your feelings. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Stop wind. <laughs> so, ah. so when when the wind picks up, I know right away, I can't, even I just can't. the slightest bit. And we've had no wind. We've had no wind in the Bay Area no, right now. Uh, it's not windy. Yeah. Yeah. Every, first of all, you guys are arguing the wrong thing. Like, okay. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, PGD. It's Listen, not even windy. That, that, Relax. The, 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 That's the whole argument like it was dangerous. No, the forecasters can never be 100%. So it was forecast that there was supposed to be tons of wind. And before, because they had 
those monumental lawsuits that they got you know yeah. blamed for for the fires. What they're trying to do is trying to prevent potential fires, so they're turning off everybody's Are they trying power. to prevent, or are they trying to say, fuck you? I think yeah. they're trying to prevent. Because, guess what? Like, No way. I'm with Justin. Now we're all susceptible. I'm with Justin. This oh, is yeah, a- let's turn everybody's power. You don't know when it's coming back on. Yeah. You know, they're giving us all these arbitrary numbers. It's Dude. Old. Maybe it's 24. Maybe it's four days. <laughs> maybe it's a week. You know? I'm going to let you sit. Well, it's here, like it just smells of this regardless, bullshit. Regardless of whether or not it's an FU or it's they're actually trying to prevent potential forest fire or whatever, potential fire, here's the bottom line. There's no way in hell a company like this would survive doing this shit if there was competition. No, absolutely. Never in a million fucking Imagine years. Imagine how mad you are if they're like your neighbors all lit up like a Christmas tree and you're fucking living yeah. in your cooler. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this motherfucker. Okay, imagine. Where's he getting that power? All right, look, who, who's your cell phone provider? AT&T? Yeah. Okay, imagine if AT&T was like, hey, everybody, you're not going to have cell service for the next five days. Verizon would get a surge. Yeah. Of new customers. Again, I have no cell phones. I have no internet. I have yeah. no power. Like nothing. Yeah. So, so, what you, so we can't do shit because ages. we can't do shit because PG and E is it. So where are we gonna go? Yeah. So they can basically be like, yeah, whatever. What are you gonna do? That's why I think leave. It's, tough. I, <laughs> yeah. Tough. That's why I think it's an ultimate flex. That's why. Yeah. That's how Dude, I think. Tough I, titties. It just smells of that. Dude. So but anyway, you, so I'm like trying to get. <clears throat> Trying to get all up and ready to go this morning and like oh wait a minute aren't you leaving town anyway yeah and I'm leaving I feel, I feel bad <laughs> so dude. your wife and kids are yeah, gonna be there yeah so I'm like that guy that's that like husband. hey see you later but I don't even know where I'm going is gonna have power so we'll see how this uh, whole weekend where, plays where out. were you supposed to go Tahoe oh uh, so, are they are they messing with Tahoe too I'm pretty sure it's, no I think it's all Bay bro is it just in the Bay yeah, I think so. I looked at the few <laughs> I looked at the map and there's yeah. a lot man there's a huge like how many it was like eight hundred thousand it was a lot residents yeah it was a lot I'm in the safe zone, so I'm not getting any uh, you know power cut out. But I, I, this irritates the shit out of me. I hate this. I hate feeling like I have no choice. You know well, what I'm saying? I had no sleep, so that's where I'm uh, you know dealing with. It. And it, it well because I mean my kids like they go to sleep to like white noise, all kind of stuff, and it's like so they're coming up and backing down, being they're scared and all, and so then the dogs like throwing up. What'd you and, do with all your you're throwing up? Yeah, he just woke up in the middle, just started throwing up on the ground. I couldn't see anything. I'm stumbling and like, <laughs> like, I, like I, I slipped in it, and then I like knocked my head on on you know one of my. <laughs> Drawers and, and oh man, dude, I'm a mess. Today. You're having a terrible time. I'm a mess today. Dude. I love your dog. Thanks, too. Your, your dog does a good job of just throwing shit on top yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah, he does. He just likes to add insult to injury every yeah. time. Anyway, it annoys me. It reminds me of the DMV yeah. when I go to the DMV and I'm, I'm in their their yeah. ridiculous line and I'm looking at their yeah. redundancy of everything they do. It's so archaic, and I think to myself. I can't go anywhere else. Yeah, <laughs> this funny. is this it's is the really only not place. that bad. I just like I like complaining like an old man. It's oh, fun. it annoys the shit of me. Cause what'd you do with your food? Yeah, well, so we have to put it in in all these different coolers. <laughs> like uh, we have like three of them, and and we just tried to put like all, especially all the perishable meat and stuff like that. That's like going to go real fast, milk and all that. But, but yeah, and we don't know when they're going to turn it back on. So are they? Are your is your wife and kids going to mom's house or something? Yeah, they're going to take off, and I, I told them to go find somewhere where they could put themselves up with the dog and and be you know cool and have power. Uh, and you're cool, right, uh, Adam? Yeah, we haven't had, we haven't been hit yet. But Katrina's freaked out. I'm more worried about the milk, right? That's like what milk? Uh, oh, oh, uh, the breast milk. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's, val- that's gold. Yeah, that is gold. Can't, can't get rid of that's, that. That's, that's titty gold. You can't get. Yeah, you can't go. You can't go to the grocery <laughs> store and go buy that if it goes bad. So that's yeah. like we're we're on high alert for that. So, but I didn't know that it was. Have you being, been drinking it? The milk. Yeah. Have you tried it yet? Yeah. Maybe. See, I, I'm not maybe you do got I, confirmed. Do I, look, do, I, I look, do I look? I admitted it. Do I look more buff than you? Yeah, you might be getting a little bit more because I, I looked at you today and I'm like, he's looking anabolic. I told you, it's like, a little sweet, right? A little side hustle. D ball and breast milk, dude. Is I'm it, trying to tell you right you now. The, the, the breast milk uh, protein synthesis <laughs> yeah. hack or whatever. I actually haven't tasted it, dude. Really? Yeah, I what? talked. I talked a big game like I would. And I was you just, was. It just hasn't came around, you know. Her nipples are hella sensitive, bro. I can't even get near them. Right from the source. Yeah, I get close to them. She's like, ah! Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You just (laughs) suddenly get pissed off. Yeah, really. (laughs) That's mine. Yeah. Yeah. He's like this, pushing me away. I can't get no, I can't get no love. I just just picture a picture of a baby here, Adam's big ass (laughs) bald head on this (laughs) side. I tried, dude. I got denied, dude. I got denied on it. So, and I just don't feel, I feel weird about taking it from a bottle. You know, I'm good with it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm good. I'm I'm good taking it out of the nipple. Right after we talk about the baby, the weird baby fetish thing you know where people dress up like babies yeah, oh the, my god we Clint. see adam in the car <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing bro just doesn't yeah. feel does it feel right hey how's the how's the new sauna we got all up and going did you guys hear so do you guys know how that came about did you know that i posted that on instagram 
What did you what do you mean? So I was I was in our old sauna about a month and a half or two ago and I did a story saying that I want a bigger, better sauna. Some sauna companies reach out and say That's how that happened? Yeah, bro. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's the power of uh Instagram hey. now, dude. Well, See what, yeah, yeah that was, that's the ultimate flex. So what do you think yeah, of this one flexing? Oh, bro, the, the clear light one is is so much better. It's got, it, and one of the things that I love about it right now, one, I noticed that it heats up a lot faster than the other one. The other mm -hmm. one I had to, mm -hmm. I'd have to turn it on like a good 30 minutes plus before. Yeah. So it's bigger and it still heats up faster than the smaller one, mm -hmm. which doesn't even make sense to me. Right? How many, yeah, well, how you can fit uh, all of us in there easily now. Is oh, this yeah. a five person one that so we it's, have? It's considered, oh, we've tried. it's considered a four person. But what I also like about this one too, is the bench that's in there. I don't know if you guys know this, that, that bench, you just pull it right out. So it's oh, portable. So you so, can stretch in there. So yeah, so you could do like oh, full on. That. And I mean, it's big enough for me to still stretch even with yoga. the bench in there. But if I really want to like starfish out and spread all the way out yeah, and yeah. do all Whoa. kinds of yoga in there, you pull the bench out and then I, I, I lay the yoga mats down in there. And then I Have you done that yet? That's all I do. Stretching in heat oh, is uh, yeah. amazing. That's great. Yeah, because the heat, what, the, what happens is the heat causes the central. This, okay, so you ever notice in, in hot weather, you feel kind of tired? Mm -hmm. Like a little, because heat depresses the central nervous system. It makes everything kind of come down, and it's the central nervous system that regulates whether or not a muscle can be stretched or not. This is why when you're cold, you're tight. Mm -hmm. So you're our, you're our science guy, and I and, and to your point of making fun of me, the shit that I've read and I forget. I've read this, and I know that there there's science to support this, and I know I've talked to Ben Greenfield about this. And of all the things that I love the most about the infrared sauna, the single thing that I love the most is if I have like the last couple of days I've had, I was really groggy. So I came in yesterday to the sauna just to do the sauna because I was so groggy from two days mm -hmm. of not sleeping and I could just feel my circadian rhythm off and mm -hmm. just feeling awful. And I had already pushed through that the day before training. So I'm like, I can't do that again. Like my body needs rest or I need to do something to feel better. Anytime I feel like that jet lag, just didn't get any sleep. And I do that sauna for 20 minutes and I come out, it's like no, it's like no other sauna I've done before. And I know it has something to do with the infrared. And I know Ben Greenfield recommends that anytime that you fly like out of the country or you throw, you would throw off your natural circadian rhythm right. that it like resets it. So I'm not familiar with uh, any science supporting that, but I've heard lots of anecdote and my, in my theory, yeah, I've, I've experienced that. Yeah. And my theory is that it's, it's like any kind of stress on the body. You know, when you're training your body's ability to acclimate to temperature and you throw a stimulus, it's like a workout. Like when you have a good workout, how do you feel afterwards? Yeah, you feel good. You're energized, right? A cold shower obviously would do that, but that's more obvious, I think, people because the cold shower kind of makes you wake up. But no, I get Real the same. Alert, yeah. I get the same effect from the sauna. I feel just better and more energized. Hundred percent. My ideal way to start my day is with uh, a sauna. Wake up in the morning. Uh, and I'll I'll do the sauna, then I'll come out of their shower, eat. It's my ideal way to. Yeah, to start if I had a day. bigger if I had a bigger place right now, one hundred percent, I'd have that thing inside mm -hmm. my house because mm -hmm. I I would like that too. It would just be nice to be able to walk downstairs yeah. and climb in it. But I mean, here's close. I mean, I'm, I'm getting in it right now at least three times a week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes you just more. have to wear some clothing. It's I also that's the only thing because yeah. it's here in the studio. I also we have cameras I've also read somewhere too the way. benefits of it like post workout like it's supposed to be really good too for recovery purposes it reduces inflammation so that could it could go either way so like for example yesterday um i don't know if you if you guys saw this i know i know you did adam i'm sure people messaged you the big ass deadlift that i did <laughs> Uh, kind of push the. I was here for the live version. I had popcorn and everything. Such an asshole, dude. Oh, I, I, a, he hasn't done any lift posts. I haven't amazing. done a post in a while. Yeah. I'm kind of feeling good. I'm like starting to work way back on my strength. I pull like 440 or something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> it wasn't over. You got to pick a different lift, bro. Yeah, this I know. Is what I figured. I know. Out. What an asshole. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you a can day, have that 24 lift. hours later, he's yeah. pulling over 500 and posting it. I'm like, you're such a prick. Uh, and know. then in come all the DMs. Yo, did you see Sal's deadlift? Oh, no, man. motherfucker, I didn't see his deadlift. Of course, I saw his deadlift. Fuck anymore. We see each other every day. I think I, in fact, I think I, didn't I text it to you guys? Yeah. I think yeah. I would have sent it to the dude. Yeah. No, you know what I'm thinking right now? I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. For me, it's all about gut health. If my gut stays healthy, then I can just put on muscle and feel strong and feel good. If it's not healthy, then I got to monitor my food intake. Then it becomes all about my health and I can't push my body. Yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, I turned 40, you know, back in February. Like it would be cool to pull six. I've only pulled 600 pounds one time. It was years ago. It would be cool to get up to a 600 pound deadlift again over the age of 40, yeah. all natural. I think yeah. that would be, that'd, uh, be that's, cool. that'd be a cool goal. Yeah, okay. just, I mean, I just want to put it out there. Since we've hung out together, you haven't pulled more than I've pulled since we've hung out together. What do you mean? 
So my I I, hit I pulled five seventy five when we were. Uh, when, oh, we did. Uh huh. Oh, did. you did. Yeah, I thought yeah, you yeah. hit five fifty five with me. No, and that I was did, the most uh, you pulled in, when we were together. But I yeah. pulled five seventy or five seventy five when nobody was looking. Yeah. yeah. No, I recorded it <laughs> in, the, in the dark corner. No, <laughs> the, I haven't the, saved. Uh, gym. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, hey, don't worry, it's saved yeah, on my yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't trip. <laughs> no, but the goal the goal is to get. I want to be able to get a uh, a six hundred pound pull, and I want it to look good. And it's just, but I'll tell you what, it's different now than it used to be. Like I can't. Just recklessly go out there and fucking chase. Now, that do you shit. guys have personal numbers that like, like you, like for me, it's not. I don't even. I need to go there. Like five hundred pull, a four hundred squat. Yeah, you got. You have the three and right? a three hundred bench is like those are my. Those are like I'm. I feel really. If I'm that's a the, really good. Li- that's yeah. a really good combo. Right. I feel like that's a. a that's a good balance. I'm pretty totally. strong on all of them. I'm obviously I'm not breaking records with any of those or anything impressive. But mm. for me, none I of fuck, us are. No. <laughs> I know, I'm like I'm not gonna throw it for out a bunch there. of average guys. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like that. Those are good. Those are all good. Those ways. are really good. Is that your goal to be able to get to those? To be able to be pulling that where I'm all at, all at the right. same time or whatever. Yeah, all at the same time and all natural. That's where I'd Dude, like it'd to be. Dude, it'd be cool to do them all in one lit, like one workout, just to do that. 300, 400, you know, 500. I mean, I don't see why. I mean, I've pulled 550, I've squatted 420, I've benched 375. I don't see why that's not doable. Now, which one's the hardest for you right now? Um, well, I'm squatting right now like 375, so I'm so not that far. that pretty close. Right. I'm, I just deadlifted the other day 440 something, so I'm not far there. You have a 500 pound deadlift right now. If you use an alternate grip yeah. think, and a belt, I yeah. think you got that right now. I think if I, I could push, I could, I think, well, I mean, I pulled 550, right? So I think I could pull 500 if I stretch myself, yeah. especially if I train for a couple of weeks in a row of actually trying to right, progress right, that. Right, 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 um, right. Uh, probably the bench would be the hardest to be over 300 right now. My bench is pretty, I'm working out with you know, 225 with blocks of five and by about the third or fourth set, that's pretty challenging yeah. for me. So if I'm at 225 right now, maybe I squeeze out 250, 275. Mm-hmm. Well, probably 250 would be easy. 275 is probably mm-hmm. around where I'm at right now. So I, that would probably be the most challenging mm-hmm. to get over 300. Yeah. What about you, Justin? You're you're the big overhead press guy. Didn't yeah. you? What was your, what's your all-time overhead press best? Uh, was... <clears throat> Well, it was a bit of a push press, just to be fair, but I push pressed 275. Damn. And I wanted to get up to three plates. So that was like a goal I've always had. It was like, trying yeah, I'm not to even like going to try. 315. With that, maybe. Um, bench, uh, bench, I got 405 when I, w- I was back at NorCal. And so I'd, I've been slowly trying to build that back up and I've been, you know, increasing my bench. That's probably the one that has been rising up the most as of late. Uh, my squats kind of, you know, teeter around the same. Like I'm pretty much, you know, I'll hit like 405 every now and then when I feel like saucy and I'm like, oh, fuck, I got some mm-hmm. juice today. Uh, but other than that, I haven't really pressed that like any further, yeah. but I, I, I would like to try. I love that. the strength stuff. I really yeah. do. I love pushing strength. It's my favorite, favorite thing to do with lifting. The only drawback to it is you hurt yourself. You know what I, I mean? Know. You start pushing it and you start feeling, you know, little, little it's, it's the threshold. Man. Yeah. You, you first start, start feeling it. energized and yeah. you know, Oh, there it goes. I tweak myself and I got to back way the fuck down. Did you see uh, Justin's 15 pound kettlebell windmill yesterday? Yeah, 15. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. That was a fucking, <laughs> well, how much does that thing weigh? Such a bastard. <laughs> and then the kettlebell case comes in and like confirms it for you. I'm like, come on guys. What's up with that? dude? Uh, that's, everybody a, knows this is the, a, the gold one. That's, that's the, the they call it big Bertha, big right? Bertha. Yeah. How much is it? What is it? 48 well, it's 105. Yeah, 105.6. <laughs> so I'll add the 0.6. Yeah. Dude, Justin's got that cake power. You know yeah. what I mean? You sticks the hip out and that big ass glute of yeah, his. Like, and still you get fucking trolls. You know, like, oh, your needle's bent uh, on that one. <laughs> Did uh, you get Form trolled? is horrible. Did you get trolled on yeah, that? Yeah, dude. I was just like, I was like, well, you know what? You might be right, but uh, that version you're describing is fucking stupid. <laughs> so this is how I do yeah. it. Well, you see, you know, it's funny because the three of us have been training our own bodies, obviously, for a very, very long time. A lot of the discrepancies between our lifts it really has it boils down to our genetics. We all know how to work out. We all know how to eat right. We've all been working out for a long time, but we all have our genetically, you know, the lifts that we're, we're, we're good at because of our genes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, speaking of genetics, uh, I read this article about genetically edited babies in Russia. What? Recently. Yeah, there was a Russian scientist that came out that said he wanted to oh, use man. the CRISPR technology to uh, remind me the CRISPR technology again. Are they trying to get back in on the uh, uh, the Olympic athletic way through genetics now <laughs> instead of the yeah, Ster- first ones steroids. using steroids? Yeah. Yeah. So CRISPR technology, basically, I don't know a whole lot about it, but essentially it's a technology that allows you to go in and edit genes in the lab. So mm-hmm. you can edit the gene 
and now you've 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 if you know what to do, you can edit a gene so that the the baby is becomes you know taller or shorter or smarter or whatever if you know what to do. And so this Russian scientist is saying that he can do it. Um, and then there was this huge scientific organ this huge science organization that's like, don't do that. We don't want scientists you know messing with editing babies. And then he came out and he's like, you can't stop scientific progress. Yeah, you you might be able to stop me, but someone else is going to do it. Wow! And you know what? Someone did. He, no, he's right. Yeah, think about it. It's no, going to happen. It's, uh, that's the it that's is the inevitable, problem. right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the scary. But there still needs to be people out there putting the brakes on and checking the morality. You know, of like a lot of these decisions. There still needs to be that, even though yes, it might be inevitable. But we need more people. Well, to think do about that. it. Think about it. Like so. So they had a meeting with uh, this scientist. Had a meeting with Vladimir Putin. So Putin went in there. And, and talk to this guy. It was like a private meeting or whatever. Nobody knows uh, what the results of that were. But at some point, someone's going to do this. And it's like nuclear technology. Like we, were the, we discovered the nuclear, you know, how to make nuclear bombs. And Shit. that technology got stolen by the Soviets. And then now that I don't know how many countries have nukes, like it's going to happen, dude. Yeah. Like whether we like it or not. And what they're saying is so funny. This, this is what they said. They said, we need to. China doesn't care. They're going all oh, in. Fuck, I guarantee China's <laughs> doing it right now. 100%. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, people are saying we need to make laws preventing private companies from doing this and only allowing governments the power to do this. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that would be just as bad. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like they're not going to make a, a you know super soldiers or some weird yeah. you know shit or Did whatever. Did you guys see, uh, I think Mir actually watches a lot of my Instagram and like what I'm into and everything. Well, wait, Mir, the company? Yeah, the we? company Mir. Like we had Brian, you know, the, the yeah, CEO yeah. on the show and everything and- uh, I just I just saw one of their latest releases. It's a copper mug, and you can use it for both coffee and you can also use it for like a Moscow mule. Oh, at the end of the night. and it's yeah. and it's insulated. It's insulated. Like so you all don't get other the stuff. taste of like the copper and all that. So it's painted I'm, on the I'm outside. I'm rocking the it's the, super the koozie, sick. The koozie today. Oh, yeah. is that the way yeah, 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 no, they, they came in? So they the two different size ones. I got it right now. It's, and it's, yeah. you put your your what yeah. is that? Your, I got Rachel's Red Bulls in here. She's been. She, oh, that is that little koozie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rachel used to work for Red Bull, so she worked out a deal. I think she hooks them up with some of like our supplements. Did you guys know this? No, no. So that's why that refrigerator is full of like Red Bulls because she used to work for the company. She has a connection there, and they wanted like protein powder or something like that. So she's been like trading. Protein powder and shit that we have. It's nice. got a little side hustle up <laughs> yeah, there. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. I totally encouraged it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. fuck yeah, go yeah. for it. We're yeah. not eating. There's like so many. There's like we have well, so companies much. send us stuff all the time that yeah. we don't work, we don't like, and yeah. so we might as well. Yeah. I mean, I go back there all the time. And By the way, up. somebody who listens to the show sent her a DM, like because she manages the main page about what the statement you just made right now. And I'm just, she's like, what do I say back to that? And I'm like, fucking just let let it be. You never know if people are being funny or they're being like rude, but they made a comment about. You know, that uh, they find it really, uh, I don't remember even the word that he used, but he was referring to that we talk about companies sending us free stuff as if it's like a- Well, no, it's not. Look, here's the thing. If you want us to work with you, um, we have to try your product and see if we like it. If we don't like it, I'm not going to get on the podcast and say, hey, so-and-so company sucks. No, 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 no. He was, but, I'll, but I'm just not going to work with you. He was them. referring to like Ned and, and Ned being expensive and that we get stuff for free and it's like we're, you know, oh, oh. Maybe, maybe they should drop their prices instead of giving you guys free stuff. And it was like- that's not going to make people yeah. don't understand what? how no people yeah. don't understand how prices work. Well, not to mention that was just a stupid statement. Well, yeah, it's yeah. Like, okay, so, so five bottles. Take the price off of all their bottles yeah. because they don't give <laughs> away five bottles for free. Oh, yeah. You've got like you no, know, half a cent you off. You can't so. even just no. You don't want to go down that uh, rabbit hole. Just, yeah. I feel like she's like, what do I say back to this? I'm like, just ignore that shit. Don't, yeah. answer, that. don't answer that stuff. No, that's yeah. so ridiculous. No, but but I'm definitely so the reason I brought that up is because I, I'm going to make that our new official like mind pump mule cup. No, that's that, that's dope. Okay. That's going to be the one. Does it you, have Does it have a lid too, Doug? It does. Yeah, swipe it over. I want to see if it. I want to see. No, no. So you're drinking coffee too, yeah. For for having the lid on there, so it doesn't spill over wow. yourself. I no, no. That. It's 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 oh, insulated yeah. and it's got the insulated lid and everything. Uh, so, yeah, super clean. Dude. By the way, Justin, huh. you ru completely ruined Moscow mules for me. Completely. What? So I'm not, nobody, I was, nobody makes them the same. Nobody, oh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. nobody. So I as a positive. So I'm I'm not a big drinker. I never have been. In fact, I've drank more alcohol since meeting you, Justin, uh, <laughs> than I ever have in my entire life. Hey, you're life. welcome. I mean, yeah. you're a cooler guy as a result. Yeah. <laughs> that's just how it goes. Makes me tolerable. Yeah. <laughs> you sell yeah. a drink. He's annoying the fuck out of me with his yeah. random shit. Here, here, shove this in your face. Yeah. Man. No, but um. So the first like mules that I really had were the ones that you made. Since then, I'm like, I like Moscow Mules. So if I go out and I want to have a drink, 
Oh, I yeah. asked for a Moscow Mule. None of them yeah, are they, as they good as They miss ingredients all the time. It pisses me off. So what's the deal? Well, because most of them mint don't is one use of the number mint. one. That, yeah. yeah, that's one of the number one. That and need. they don't have the right ratio of lime juice. They always use like too much lime juice, and it, it like makes it too tart, or like it just doesn't blend well. So yeah, I've figured out the the exact formula for it. So yep. That, that's and what thing. you do with the mint is different. Did so. you share that in our newsletter? Did you give away the Moscow Mule? Not yet? yet. Oh, you haven't yet. No, we'll, we'll probably I'll probably throw that in there next time. You yeah. should yeah. do that. Yeah. Yes. But what he does with the mint is interesting too. He takes the mint leaves and then he like claps them in his hand. Right. He booty and claps he expresses, them. Too. Yeah. Oh. Expresses the oil, see, man. He, yeah. He booty claps yours. You haven't seen that? <laughs> <laughs> he always asks me when I come over to the Moscow Mule. I don't know how to do that. He's like, who's or what? Oh, does Sal's watch this, Adam? Yeah. Is then that why it tastes familiar? Yeah. Then he booty claps it. Oh, it tastes familiar. Oh. Yeah, what? <laughs> I, know this, I know this flavor. Oh, That's oh, disgusting. Oh, goodness. Anyway, hey, so since we're a fitness and health podcast, I'm going to tell you guys oh, about- are? Yeah. Sweet. Nice transition. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you guys about something that is has been shown in studies to reduce your risk of early death by 33%, 33% for people who are heart attack survivors. So if you've had a heart attack, there's one thing you can do that studies show that will, after you've had the heart attack and you've survived- that will reduce your risk of mortality after that by an, by thirty three percent, which is Strength a massive train. amount. Exercise? No, this is something that you. And I'm pretty sure you won't guess. So what else? Diet, uh, exercise. Yeah, all the basic sleep. stuff. Sleep. No, owning a dog. They ah. found that owning a dog. Well, this just supports your your statement you the made the other day about relationships mm-hmm. and cigarettes. Mm-hmm. What, it, what? How interesting is that? Yep. And, and how do you measure that? Well, so they find that people who own dogs and they well they control all the factors, right? And they'll say, yeah. okay, people that own dogs versus people that don't, and they control all the factors: smoking, diet, all the stuff we know to control. So it's not perfect, but if it's a big enough percentage, that means that there's something there. Mm. So for everyday regular people, forget about having, if you had a heart attack or not, you're just regular people. If you own a dog, your risk of all-cause mortality goes down by 24%. And the thing, wow. well, you know what I'd get from that? The thing, the takeaway that I get from that is, is all it's confirming for me, because it's the same point that you make with the uh, relationships and cigarettes that we talked about the other day, is right. that, how important the, the mental aspect is. Totally. Yep. That, yes, the, the physical part, exercise, nutrition, diet, we all but know having that. Those, brings those, you to that calm state. Having yeah. those relationships. And dogs are are wonderful. I mean, yeah, it's hard they're to, always happy to see you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and they make phenomenal companions. Um, don't for, you guys think that, like, people who don't like dogs or don't like music are psychopaths? Yeah, well, yeah I I'm think. like, come on. I, like, I mean, I've met a few, like, people, like, oh. Blah, blah. I, for me, it's people who don't like What's kids. What's wrong with you? People who don't like kids, I'm always like, all right. So well, wrong that's, with you. I can kind of understand. Yeah, sometimes. I can understand it too. Yeah. 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 I didn't like kids Get for your a long snotty time. kid out of here. Like, <laughs> yeah. Wow, you guys are yeah. fucking yeah. Yeah. Out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I understand that more. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I love my kids, but your kids? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that makes, I don't know about that. It makes sense, yeah. though, because yeah. you guys are fucking slightly psychopathic. <laughs> I'm with just a little bit of the asshole in me. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, bro. I don't like all kids. So Dogs, yes. So another cool study, this was an interesting one. There was evidence, they found evidence in Israel Israel and some some old caves that prehistoric, you know, ancient man stored uh, bone marrow to eat for later. So they found evidence that what what hunters would do is they go out, kill the animal, strip the animal of, of meat, and fat, and eat it, whatever. But then they would take the bones back to their caves and store those bones for like up to nine okay. weeks or longer, so that later on they could open the bones up and eat the bone marrow and feast on it. Oh, so wow. it's like it's like the first. It's like the the or no, actually longer, up to nine months, I should say. It's like the first evidence that of us storing food like we do now with like canned food or whatever. Before we figured out it was like salt after that, and then yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I always find it fascinating how we figure this stuff out. Yeah, what do you mean? Like, the, like the how arche- do they know? Yeah, like the archaeologists. There's, I just picture them. They're you know they're digging the hole. You know, they find a bone, right? Like, or oh, right? They, they must have stored this. Yes, right? Yeah. They're like, yeah. they for sure stored this for nine weeks. And we're like, what the fuck? No, How do you come up with that? They have a guy like reenacting it. It's like, okay, then I'm going. And like, he, like, right, the, the fire was over yeah. here. This is over here. You know what? I Ooh, bet they were doing me. this. Like, I mean, how yeah. much of it is just guessing? I know, and it's one cave. What if it was like a pre- like a joke? A pretty yeah. smart joke. Like, yes. hey, you know, <laughs> hey, Ugg is falling asleep. Fall asleep. Ugh. Let's put a bunch of bones next to his bed. <laughs> right. You know? Right. <laughs> you know, shut up. Yeah, Five hundred thousand years later, oh, they somebody. stored bones. I see. For yeah. the bone. yeah. No, it's much more more uh, elegant, elegant and complex than that in terms of how they figure this out. But they're pretty sure that I'm this sure. is this shows that we stored 
these bones like canned foods. Like we took the bones and we well, knew that we, there was. Didn't we them. think forever? Like di- the, we've we've depicted the way dinosaurs look forever, and then there's been more research that proves that they probably have feathers all over yeah. them and shit. Yeah, yeah. Like that was like a yeah, terrible. Like they probably look, I mean, they probably look nothing like all the books. Creating all the narrative. I know, like it's the children's books probably looks nothing like what they really. Uh, are. We know what their bones look like. Yeah, that's what we know. All right, well, fuck the study then. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I don't mean to shit on it. I just when I hear stuff like we don't that, know anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we, well, it's and we, just not definitive. We, yeah, we, and we talk so certain about yeah. stuff like that. I always go like, "How is this? How did this happen?" Like, I mean, I, obviously they're digging these bones up. Yes, we have carbon dating, so we can guess about when it happened. But th- it was that they were storing this for nine weeks, and I they think were they doing were, it for the bone marrow. I like, think they were. How t- the fuck do you not know it wasn't like Lincoln Logs? Well, they were a kid's toy set that be- was sitting there forever. That they were stacking bones together, and then they just. Like I think their tool marks and and the bones are far away from when the animals were hunted because we didn't hunt animals and then bring the whole carcass back to the cave. A lot of a lot, the evidence points that we would strip them. And but you're right. I mean, who knows? Yeah, mm. fuck studies. Yeah, <laughs> I love studies. All right, our first question is from Beard Fit ninety one. I know you guys previously said that jumping in the sauna right after a workout isn't the best thing, but if time is limited. Isn't it better to do it before or after a workout than not? Oh, at I didn't all. even know you okay. picked this question. Okay, so so uh, so there's a little bit of controversy around sauna use post workout. Yeah, I wouldn't jump in the sauna, just so you know. Yeah, yeah thanks, jump, Dad. Yeah, joke. Gonna, so gonna sit down, and relax. So here's the so here's the deal. Uh, there there are studies that show, and these are pretty good studies when it comes to uh, endurance athletes. That they took a bunch of cyclists. There were a couple of these, <laughs> and they had the cyclists train really hard. And they took half of them and they had them also use a sauna post-workout. And what they found was the cyclists that used the sauna post-workout had far greater improvements in uh, endurance adaptations and performance. So when I hear a study like that, right away I think, okay, well, performance athletes and people that are trying to build muscle and is a different is and burn and burn calories or burn fat or fall in a different category than a bunch of cyclists who are trying to recover and come back to their sport. It could be right because it's uh, the same. It's the same type of study that we would see with uh, professional athletes that ice afterwards, mm. right? There's there's lots of benefits to uh, and you see this in the NBA all the time. You know, right. LeBron James goes out in the fourth quarter. They're basically already won. He's already got ice packs wrapped around his knees to bring down inflammation. Because he has to turn around and do like the next day. Right, exactly. And so then it makes sense because I care more performance. But if I'm an athlete who is actually trying to build muscle, uh, there's a lot of benefits to the inflammation and allowing the body to, to go its natural course and repair itself, right? It could be, and but I think that that is splitting hairs. I think that, the, oh, we don't want to reduce the inflammation from the sauna post-workout because that'll reduce the muscle building uh, signal. I think that's splitting hairs. And there are some studies that suggest that you may actually get stronger and build a little bit more muscle by using a sauna anyway. So the whole mm. thing is about, should I use it post-workout? Now, right. here's, here's the deal. For me personally... I notice benefit to using a sauna post workout. I really do. If I lift and then I go to the sauna, um, I seem to uh, improve faster in my lifts and feel better. Now it could be because I tend to push my body towards its its kind of its well, limit. Do you also think that it has something to do with that you're using our infrared sauna versus a regular traditional sauna? Regular traditional sauna just takes much longer to to heat up the body uh, to get that core temperature up. Whereas infrareds don't need to be as hot mm-hmm. because they raise the, the core temperature up. There are supposed to be benefits over from for infrared versus traditional sauna. Again, splitting hairs. They're both awesome. They both because a traditional sauna is hotter. It doesn't have the infrared that heats you up internally. Um, but it's hotter overall. Like you're still you, getting the mitochondria benefits that you get in in the infrared. Oh as, yeah, you're getting all the same benefits. Oh really? I yeah, didn't know that. Absolutely. I thought that, that was yeah. the main benefit of the infrared opposed to yeah. a regular no, sauna. Immune boosting benefit is one of my favorites. So you know how the body um, when you when you start to get an infection, what happens? Mm-hmm. Your body gives you a fever because the fever, the heating up of the body, um, reduces the virus or bacteria's uh, ability to to replicate. Um, it's also stimulates the you know some of the white blood cells and stuff that are coming out to to fight these infections. So a fever is part of the infection fighting process. Well, a sauna simulates that. So if you feel like you're getting sick, um, like oh I think I might be getting a cold or I might be getting now I don't recommend going in a sauna when you're full on already sick. Right. But if you feel like you're getting sick, sauna use theoretically should help. And studies show that studies show that people who use saunas regularly have less uh, less infections and less illness as well. It's, it's actually, there was a huge study, a Finnish study, that I think there were like 5,000 or 10,000 people in the study. 
they found that regular sauna use uh, reduced all-cause mortality well, significantly. I noticed just when we we started doing this, what almost almost four years ago, when we started talking about hot cold therapy. This was mm-hmm. back when we were talking. This was way back early episodes, like two hundred something, <clears throat> when we were talking about the benefits of like cryotherapy and sauna. And I started to implement that for the first time in my life. So all of my training career, uh, yes, I've used a cold plunge. Yes, I've done cryo. Yes, I've done sauna. But I've never like done it and treated it like a, a different system of the body and tried to train it. Mm. Yeah. And for the first time in my life, a few years back when we talked about this, I actually, okay, I'm going to cold plunge and I'm going to train in the sauna at least three times a week every week. And that was I. I've never gone that long and not been sick ever in my life. Yeah, I, I like I've always I've always had a very weak immune system. In fact, um, I'm very sensitive to getting sick. And somebody I used to say, anytime someone around me is sick, I'm guaranteed one of the people that's going to get it. Where since I started doing that, I've been more resilient to colds than mm-hmm. I have my entire life. Yeah, I look at it too. Like I I felt. <clears throat> I started to use it post workout and have felt like better acclimated when I do start to heat up. So I've been playing basketball every now and then, still trying to keep that up. And um, I, I do a, a fair bit of a cardio, not that much cardio, like mainly just movement. And I'm trying to make sure like I'm, you know, everything is is in check with my joints. But like using the sauna after I, I'll work out, I, I get those that same sort of a feeling afterwards where it's just like my whole body gets even that much more exaggerated in terms of like uh, heating it all the way through. And uh, that has kind of had some carryover into energy when I when I am playing. You don't overheat as easily. Right. Yeah. So now I have also messed around with doing the sauna before a workout. Have you guys tried that yet? No. So sauna before the workout is interesting. I, can't, um, I wouldn't I think, don't I would think I would like it. Oh no, 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 no! If you want to just get a good, if you want to like muscle, con- if you want to connect to muscle, get a pump, have really good mobility. So you're gonna go. Let's say you're gonna go to the gym and you're oh, gonna yeah. go. You're mobility, gonna go lighter, sure. and you want to go full range of motion and get a really good pump. The pumps you get are fast, like real fast, because you're so warmed up. You know, towel off or whatever. Let your body cool down a little bit. Then go into the gym. Go do some full range. Of, first of all, you'll notice your range of motion is instantly better just because you, the, yeah. the sauna heated you up. Oh, uh, yeah. But the pumps you get are just insane. Hmm. Now, hmm. I don't know if that's going to lead to, I guess indirectly it could lead to better muscle gain, right? If you're, because you're, you're, you're getting a better pump because the blood flow is already, hmm. uh, you know, improved or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know what? The time that you do your sauna doesn't matter nearly as much as the fact that you're doing it anyway to begin with. So right. if you're like, hey, I can't do it post-workout or I have to do it post-workout or I have to um, – the only time I would say you probably don't want to do too much sauna is right before bed. I think that will probably disrupt your sleep if you get your core temperature up too high and then go straight to bed. Um, other than that, I don't. it doesn't really matter. Don't worry too much about the time. If you can pick the time, um, then I would say do it post-workout if you're going to have a really hard workout – and you think it may benefit you to have a little faster recovery. Otherwise, who cares? Do it any the, time of the day. The best I've ever felt is cryo or cold plunge before a workout, a yeah. workout, then sauna. Oh, so you go boom, yeah, boom. Yeah, that's, that's been my combo. Dude, go, hop in, go hop in a cryo or do a cold freezing plunge. Freezing shower, I've got and it. Then, yeah, or a freezing shower and then get into your workout. And man, I feel the, the adrenaline rush that that's you get it. from that. Yeah, yeah gets me into my workout more. I feel so alert and I feel connected for those reasons. It's like so, hyper focused. And then afterwards sitting in the sauna for me, that's the the perfect format. But again, I think it's a great point and we talk about this on the show all the time that these are those things that w- sometimes annoy me about the fitness community is, you know, we'll 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 argue and debate over all these studies of, oh, you know, this is better yeah, before for- the workout, after the workout, 22 minutes, no, 25 minutes. Yeah. It's like it's, everybody relax. Right, exactly. You know, it's, it's a creatine argument. It's any of these. Yeah. these How is your body specifically responding? Yeah, it's the anabolic yeah. window bullshit stuff. It's like if you're doing it, you're doing it. That's what matters. Mm-hmm. Next question is from Real Upset Stomach. I'm really weak <laughs> at the bench press and can't seem to gain strength. I have checked and rechecked my form, but have found no issues. Well, Justin, what and I, should, you should I do next? You and I should handle this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let the real professionals in on, on the bench press. I mean, it, uh, it's really tough to answer this actually yeah. when you don't, when we can't see the person, because a lot of times what, what makes somebody a, a great bencher is uh, the the way their body is, right? Their genetic makeup, their their anatomy. Like if you have really short limbs. Uh, it's very conducive for benching well. If you got a big barrel chest and you got short, short arms, 
you're going to be a much better bencher than some lanky looking dude like me. It's yeah. a it's a long way the bench has to travel, and it takes a, a lot more strength to move that because it's strength is 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 weight over over distance, and so somebody who has to go has to travel the bar 15 inches versus somebody has to travel the bar six inches, that person has to travel 15 inches could do less weight and be technically stronger than the person who's doing more weight. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's also leverage and, and all that stuff. But look, yeah. regardless of your genetic build, um, one of the best ways to improve strength in any lift, I don't care if it's a bench press, squat, deadlift, or curls, is to practice it often. Um, people forget that strength is a skill. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that your chest, shoulders, and triceps need to get bigger and stronger. That's part of it for sure. But it's also, are you perfecting the skill of the bench press and how your muscles fire together? And can you replicate it consistently? Yes. Like, can you get into that uh, you know, position, but also can you generate and maximize the amount of force output that you're providing to the bar? So you know, one of the biggest things for me was really – focusing in on leg drive and focusing in on how to connect to the rest of my body. Because when I can access, you know, a tensity across my entire body and get that irradiating effect where now I have even more stability overall, my entire body, it's amazing how much more force you can squeeze out just from that one. That's thing. a good, it's a good point. Uh, tensing up the entire body will give you more power, the ability to generate more power. So like if you were to test your grip strength, and squeeze something, if you tried to squeeze something as hard as you could but kept the rest of your body relaxed, you would not squeeze it nearly as hard as if you tensed up uh, the rest of your body. So that's a very good point. I also find being able to keep yourself in a retracted position was like the biggest game changer for me. Like, you know, for the- That's the shoulders pinned back position. Right, your shoulders peeled back and tucked down, right, when you're bench pressing so that your, your chest is taking over the load and the shoulders aren't doing a lot of the work and your triceps aren't doing a lot of the work. For me, that was a that was the biggest game changer for improving my strength with my because we were taught for the longest time to not arch your low back and that the way power lifters lifted was wrong and that the right way to bench press is with this flat back and you know we so for many many years I was doing this putting my feet up on the bench or flattening my back trying to bench press and since we do everything in front of us and we talk about this a lot everybody is just naturally kind of rounded forward then you get into an exercise that that is is performed better when you actually have the shoulders in a peeled back or retracted position you know it's it's natural that you're going to go to your default pattern it's natural you're going to roll forward which is what you spend 23 of your 24 hours of the day in that position and so getting to a place where I could train my body to be to pen that and hold it back while I press. And for me, that's where like priming was like a game changer. Like learning how important it was for me to prime prime my rhomboids, prime my my back and my lats to pull my shoulder girdle back and be able to hold it in that position before I go into a bench. Yeah. That was like game changer. There's for also me. compartmentalizing the lift and uh, really breaking it down. So if it's you know, your, your lockout is the problem, for instance, and like putting a block there. So now like you're not coming all the way down, but now you're just waiting and emphasizing the lockout specifically in the lift and, and just working on that. And then also like, you know, at the very bottom, like using a pause and, and, and maybe exaggerating the time length of like the pause. So like lightening the load, but now like generating, focusing on generating that, that, that strength when you need it in the, in its lowest position. So. Right. Right. I, I remember years ago, um, <laughs> watching one of my trainers uh, and and he was a super, super strong at certain lifts and watching him train his clients. So what he would do is he would train his, he had a lot of, he had a huge client load. So he'd train a few clients. Then he'd have like a 10 minute break. Then he'd go to the bench and he'd bench press. And then he'd go train some more clients and he had another break and then he'd Just go back frequency. to the bench yeah. and he'd bench press. And then he had some clients and he'd go down and he'd bench press. Now he wasn't bench pressing with tons of intensity. So it's not like he went out there and bench pressed to failure. Just practice. But he would take a heavy weight that was decently heavy and he'd practice a few reps and put it up. And he would do this throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And this guy bench pressed a tremendous amount of weight for his size. And I remember watching this going, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let me try that out. And I did. I tried it out and I tried it out with several lifts and I got stronger real fast. And yeah. so if you're if you're following a traditional muscle building routine where you're hitting your your bench press, you know, once or twice a week, Try practicing it more frequently. That this doesn't mean you're going to work out real hard more frequently. It means you're going to go bench more frequently and practice more frequently. You can bench press four or five days a week 
if you go out and you, you adjust the intensity so you don't overdo it. But just that frequency and practice alone, man, that gets people's strength through the roof. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what your routine looks like, but I can assume, I'm going to assume that you probably bench press really hard once a week man. and maybe do another day a week. I would say try benching three or four days a week, and, and and a majority of that time you're just practicing the lift, and maybe one of those times you're actually going well, body, hard and heavy. Well, bodybuilding routines look completely different than strength training routines. Yeah. Look completely different. To maximize one of the yeah, other. Yeah, right? the, the programming is totally different. You can have a very impressive looking chest and not be that strong in bench press. Yeah, I've so it, a bunch. Yeah, if you, if it's just if you're just doing a lot of bodybuilding volume training and that's and and that's all you're doing, but if you're all your strength athletes, a powerlifting program. Man, there's a ton of frequency mm -hmm. in there, and it's all. And you're not always moving. You're not trying to get hella sore all the time. You're practicing the, the lift. So I think that's important. Whoever this is that's asking this question is understanding too your 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 real desired outcome. Are you just are you trying to chase strength and get better at the bench press? If that's the case, do it more often. And doesn't mean you have to go to failure or be sore from it. Practice the lift like crazy. Mm -hmm. You will get significantly stronger and better at the lift. If your desired outcome is you're, you want to build a, a bigger, more impressive chest. Well, that's a different story. We have a guide for that. We have a free guide that talks all about building your chest, but building your chest and then asking for strength, although In they a both specific area, right? Although they both have carryover to each other, there, there's a there's a different type mm. of focus. And there are exercises that will help you with your bench that are not just bench press. So, like uh, uh, doing dumbbell uh, presses will help you. Um, incline presses will help you get stronger to bench press. Sometimes you need to back off the bench press and just do incline for a while to address some weaknesses. Um, dips, dips Man, can help people. Deep dips. Yeah, deep dips can help people with their bench press. So there's other exercises that can help as well. Next question is from Corn Van Gruening. You guys always talk about reverse dieting. What exactly is it and what would be the best approach? So reverse dieting uh, became popular. Going in the other direction. Yeah, yeah. When, when you have these uh, like bikini competitors and physique competitors and bodybuilding competitors who would go on these 12 or 16-week diet protocols to get super, super shredded for a competition. And then what ended up happening is they would get really shredded. They'd restrict their calories, do lots of cardio, whatever, get really, really shredded. Then they would do their competition. Then the competition was over. And then they'd just go nuts. They would just go nuts and eat a bunch of food and, okay, I'm done with my competition. And some of these people would gain 30, 40, 50 pounds in a very, very short period of time, which is terribly unhealthy for the body and actually results in the creation of new fat cells. It actually makes it harder for you to get lean uh, again later on. So then people start to learn about reverse dieting. And reverse dieting basically says this. If you have 12 weeks leading into a competition – you should have maybe six to 10 weeks leading out of it as well. And the reverse diet is literally kind of the opposite of what the diet was. You're slowly upping your calories in a structured way to prevent that crazy rebound and fat gain that people get uh, post-show. Now, the way I look at it is the way I would look at somebody who uses uh, anabolic steroids. Like someone's going to go, I'm going to do an eight-week cycle of anabolic steroids, but they don't have any post-cycle therapy planned. They're setting themselves up for failure. So like a good... You know, if you talk to these pro bodybuilders, they'll say a good steroid cycle is dictated by the post-cycle therapy. Well, a good diet, in my opinion, is dictated by the reverse diet. How good can you come out of it, speed up the metabolism, and minimize uh, some of the problems that, that happen with the without reverse dieting? Well, the, <clears throat> I love this conversation because this is actually how I found Lane Norton. Um, and when I was first getting into like the whole bodybuilding world and that community, I was like searching for you know, bodybuilders that were, were presenting really good information around this. I knew this because I know how the body works. I know how the metabolism works, or I understand it to somewhat that, you know, if we restrict calories, restrict calories, restrict calories to get lean, what ends up happening is the, the body adapts to that. And it becomes, this becomes your new caloric maintenance. I think a lot of people don't understand that our metabolism is this free flowing thing. It is not a, a set number. You weren't born with a certain metabolism that burns X amount of calories. It's ever changing. Every time you add a couple pounds of muscle to your body, it changes. Every time you start exercising a certain way, it changes. If you become more sedentary, it changes. You restrict calories uh, dramatically for weeks on weeks on weeks, it changes. It changes. It's adapting. It's adapting and it's getting, it's getting used to whatever that you're doing to it. So if you have somebody who's on a diet who is you know, week over week over week has been increasing cardio and and restricting calories and restricting calories. That person who started that diet 
diet, they might have had a caloric maintenance at, say, let's say 2,500 calories when they started this whole process. That, that's where their bodies stayed the same. That's what calorie maintenance means. And then over that time, they've restricted calories and maybe even added movement. And by the time of the, they get to their, their ultimate goal, they look the way they want to or they lose their 20 pounds, their new calorie maintenance is no longer 2,500. It might be something like 1,400. And so what ends up happening a lot of time is people go, oh, awesome. I look amazing. This is what was my goal. Now, I, 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 now I'm back to how I was eating before. Yeah. And what ends up happening is now they're in a worse position than they were back when they were, they had, they had built their metabol or their metabolism or their calorie maintenance, excuse me, was at 2,500 because now their calorie maintenance is at 1,400. And then they think they can go back to how they were eating that 2,500 to 3,000 calorie diet sometimes. And what ends up happening is it just a ton of weight gets body fat gets put on them because they have a new, a new calorie maintenance. And what you want to do, like Sal was saying, is the same way you restricted every week over week to get down to that place, you want to slowly introduce calories back into the diet and ideally change your stimulus. So this is where I love to switch up the programming for my clients. So if I have a client, we reach our goal, you know, when she first hired me, her calorie maintenance was somewhere between 25, 2600 calories. I've slowly reduced her and and done and and we were following a certain program and she hits her goal. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm, my job isn't done now like cuz I don't want her only eating 14, 1500 calories for the rest of her life. So now I'm going to start coming the other way and I'm going to start adding calories to her diet. And when I do that, I'm also going to change the stimulus inside the gym. So switch up her programming. Maybe she's following like MAPS Anabolic. That's what got us down to that size. Now I'm going to go to MAPS Performance or I'm going to go to something like MAPS Strong, something completely different, a new stimulus. So what I'm hoping by doing that, while I'm increasing calories back into her diet, I'm hoping any extra calories that her body is getting, that they're getting partitioned over to build muscle and to support this new adaptation, this new focus, this new modality that we're doing. So that that's what reverse dieting is. And a lot of people didn't talk about this. I didn't learn about this until over a decade into personal training, how important this was. And you know, the way we were taught in the, the back in the days was just cut calories, restrict, get them to lose lose weight. And then you're done. And then you're done. Yeah. You know, there was no there was no talk about what do you do to these people with, you know, after they reach their goal. And there still isn't a lot of people talking about this. I mean, Lane was one of the first people that I came across. He's got a great book on this too. I think it's one of the better uh, pieces of content that you can invest in for somebody who is, you know, wanting to diet, get down into great shape. And then what does it look like to come out of it? Because uh, if you care about staying fit for the rest of your life, uh, that part of it is as important, uh, if not more important than the journey there. Next question is from Rabri. If you're employed by a gym that provides you with leads and clients, is it inappropriate to also develop your training business outside of the club? Not everyone who wants to train with me wants to pay for the gym's membership. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you picked. What, did you pick this one? I Justin? picked this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you picked this one. So I, I, I think I think it's bad. Yeah. Oh well, I was just gonna well, say. Yeah, we'll talk about you, this. all you look at. Here's the thing: when it comes to your career and your business, one of the most important things. Look, it's like fitness. When you look at your fitness goals, there's ways to get to a particular goal fast, and then yes. there's ways to get to a goal with integrity, long term, forever, long term success. A lot of it's determined on your integrity, and and your integrity is determined by the people around you who've worked with you. And if you're working for a gym that's providing you with leads and clients, um, to maintain your integrity, if those clients want to hire you, you train them in that gym. Yeah. You don't take them outside that gym because that's you might get more clients and make more money in the short term, but I'm going to tell you something right now, in the long term, it, people will start to find out. It's a false. Not be it's a false perception too. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I did this. Okay. So, and this was really important to me. So when I when so when I went through my 24 hour fitness career, there was a point about when I was 25 ish, somewhere around that range, where they started to put a ceiling on how much money we could make. And I, a guy like me hated that. I like I, one of the things I loved about that career was the more I worked, the more I sold, the more successful my my club was, the more money I made. And so I was and I was very money motivated. And at one point, the company sold and changed, and they put a ceiling on it. And they got to a point where no matter how much money I sold, no matter what I did, I, I could no longer make any more income. And I had, at that point in my life, I got used to making a certain amount of money. I had, I had a lifestyle that I liked, that I was used to. And I was like, what the fuck do I do? 
and it was forbidden. Moonlighting was forbidden there. If they found out that you were training, you're fired, clock, you're fired for sure. And so I, I had this dilemma, like, man, what do I do? Like, this is fucked. Like, I'm in this situation where they won't allow me to go that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And then I did it, which I'm not supposed to do. But when I did it, the thing that I, I said to myself before I did it, it's like, I am not going to pull from any leads from this gym. If I'm going to look outside and build a business that's separate, I don't want I don't want to have anything to do with this. And it wasn't just for it was for integrity reasons because I, I I definitely believe I have that and that was a purpose. It also was because I wanted to prove that I could build the business without the company's assistant help. Because if I just pulled from all their leads, yeah, you have a false sense of how awesome you think you are. And you that's know? what I meant by the fault. You have yeah. a false perception of the ability to really build a business because mm -hmm. you're using this company that's probably paying money to advertise or drive leads, or they have a storefront. And so people come in and you don't have to pay for that. And so then you start, I mean, how many times have you guys seen that? How many guys have, have oh, you had trainers that work for you right. that Dude, think that they're awesome, oh, yeah. Yeah, that they could build a, t a huge business, but all they're doing is pulling from well, the because all they look at is then how much is like getting carved off your paycheck, right? And, and they don't look at like all the the marketing materials. They don't look at like you know the insurance umbrella that you're under. They don't look at like all these different like leads coming in every single day coming to you. And when you're out there on your own, man, it is it is a harsh well, that's reality. The, that not only is it harsh, and this is the conversation. I used to have this conversation a lot. This was a common conversation with with trainers that work for me. And that is that, you know, to your point, Justin, you know, 24 hour fitness used to spend $25 million a year in advertising and lead generation. Yep. And, you know, as, as this, the small person on the podium toll here, the trainer who clocks in and, and, and gets paid their you know, toll. Yeah, $25 <laughs> to $50 uh, an hour to, to train uh, clients is going like, oh my God, I'm only getting half the money that the business is getting. And they don't do anything. They don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, they do the most in fucking important thing. They get people to walk through that door because if you didn't, if they didn't walk through that door, where the fuck are you going to get them? The grocery store, out on the street. You know how hard that is. Mm -hmm. That is unbelievable. That's the hardest part. It is the hardest part by far. So by you poaching people that have already been driven into your gym, so you can hustle and make a little bit more money. I mean, one, it's I think it's 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 not having integrity, yeah. and two, you you really haven't built a business. Yeah. I don't care if it's it's generating an extra fifty grand to a hundred grand a year for you. If the leads are coming from the business that you're currently working from, you didn't build a and, business. And if they cut that off, and you because I've had trainers do this, where they're like, "I've built, I have tons of clients I've built on my own. I, I think I'm going to leave and go try on my own." And I know, yeah, I know how you're getting your clients. It's through yeah. the leads that the gym's generating. Then they go off on their own, and they last the grand total of six months yeah. because they don't, they no longer have those leads. They no longer, and clients drop off. And then they're screwed. And now where are they going to go? They're not going to go back to the gym because the gym is like, screw you. You were taking our I our, used our to customers. tell all my trainers that were even considering going off and doing their own thing, if you haven't figured out how to be the number one guy or the number one girl in this facility, you're not going to do dick when you leave here. And I'm it's, sorry it's, to tell you true. that. Yep. But if you can't figure it out with all the shit, that the, the, all the hard stuff that you, you don't think is really hard being taken care of for you, a facility that with the equipment that somebody's servicing and taking care of, somebody scanning to check in and welcome them in, running all the back end and systems and bookkeeping, somebody advertising, generating leads for you, having the lights on for you know X amount of hours, all the shit that you don't think about. That's why you make only. 50%. I remember having that conversation with you. It's one of those things like I purposely like shied away a lot of clients that were immediately going to follow me to the next gym, but I wanted to see if I could do it. The whole point of it was, how am I going to be able to keep building and sustaining my own business if I'm doing this on my own? What does this new venture look like? How I need to be? I, I figured out right away. I had to be one of the trainers that was more professional. Had you know everything together? Had a website. None of these other trainers had their own website. Like there's just there was so many steps I had to take. And if I wasn't going to look at that and really like assess what needed to happen for me to be, start generating my own uh, my own leads in my own business, uh, you know, I would have been all comfortable with the ten to twenty clients that I brought over, and then that would have been yeah. in my whole business. And by the way, just because you are the top trainer in your gym, that still doesn't guarantee you're going to be successful. No, on your own. no, that's it's just it's just it's a guarantee you're not going to be successful if, if you can't not, be the top yeah, trainer. Yes, yeah. yes. and then you go off on your own. I can pretty much guarantee. It's still hard. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I had many of my 
top guys or girls that work for me that were killing it in the facility go off and try and do it on their own and they just they ended up coming back more often yeah. than not they come back yeah. because yeah. it's it's there's a lot that you don't think about so now there's a second part to this question which is not everyone who wants to train with me wants to pay for the gym's membership look i'm gonna tell you something right now if you communicate to a client if someone comes to you and says hey look i want to hire you but i don't want to pay for the gym membership um, but you know, so can we do this on the side and you tell them, you know, unfortunately I can't, I work for the gym. Um, I have an agreement with them. I only can train their client, the clients in here that communicates a great level of integrity out to the people who want, may want, might want to hire you. And I tell you what, that goes right. very far. Yeah. Remember your, remember your job as a personal trainer, your job as a trainer is to help people get to their fitness and health goals. And that means they have to trust you. And if you've already built kind of this facade that you're sneaky on the side type of deal, right. you're going to lose your power as a trainer as well. It's all built on integrity. All of it, 100% built on integrity. Well, and if you're also struggling to convince somebody to spend an extra $30 a month, uh, you, you got to become a better trainer. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you, if people's, you know, the reason why they're not signing up for you is because the twenty nine ninety nine a month they got to pay for the gym membership. Like, what kind of value are you building in yourself? Yeah. You ain't that good. No. You got to work on your skills. And you have there. that much time to go outside the gym and like yeah. all that wasted time, like yeah. where you could just be stacking clients. Like, mm -hmm. well, like, just focus on that. No, that's actually a good point too. I think a lot of trainers don't realize that. Like, let's it say you even train equate to the same. Yeah, let's say you train you know, five people a day in that gym and then you have like two clients off site. Um, the going back and forth between them kills a lot of time. It actually doesn't make you as much money as you think because of all the different locations that you're training people. It's not as especially, awesome as it sounds. Especially you know? since the if you're really maximizing your time and, and trying to in, build your business, every extra minute that you can spend on your floor in a mm -hmm. gym, which by the way, is providing the leads for you, okay? And right now, you listen to this shit probably on the treadmill or inside your fucking gym yeah, right now. Look around. And there's probably 30 <laughs> to 50 people in there right now that you didn't have to go get. And they're right there for you to talk to. And if you're not talking to them and you're not getting those leads, you're already fucking missing out. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things to do as a general manager is I would take my trainers in, we'd have conversations around this, and they'd be like, but how do I how do I get yeah. leads or whatever? And I point to the my my, my office window and I go yeah. look out there. Yeah. And then they'd be like, Oh, I know, but it's so hard. So I'd say, you know what? Come with me. I used to do this all the time. I go, come with me. And we walk out to the workout floor. And within 30 minutes, I'd book them several goal assessments. And sometimes I'd actually yeah. get them a client uh, right then on uh, right you, then. You know, it's easier there than yes, outside yes, of there. You know oh it's really God. hard. You Trust. gotta convince them that fitness is a good idea. Right. They already know. Like they wanna they're improve, there. But yeah. they're not it's doing a warm it. lead already. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like come on. Try starting up a conversation with someone to do a goal assessment with you. That's in the grocery at, store. At the Starbucks <laughs> yeah, <or> the <laughs> yeah, grocery store. <laughs> really though, I mean you're out of shape. If, I you, get you the gym. if you haven't done that before, you? you should if you ever think about leaving a gym, like if you're if you're a trainer listening right now, you're tired of your fucking corporate gym you work for and you're you're gonna. You're thinking about going private. I urge you to go to your local Safeway, Starbucks, and try and convince three to five people to come in the gym and and do a free assessment. Yeah, with just you. a free workout. If yeah. you haven't fucking done that yet, you better learn to do that because it's a lot harder to drive people into your private facility or location you're working on than it is working for. Some oh my god, gym. I could I could park myself at the front desk and book ten appointments within an hour easily at a gym. Yeah. Boy, do that it's out in the real world. It's almost too easy. Very difficult. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Adam at mindpumpadam. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, and you can find me at mindpumpsal.